plenty to get our teeth into, plenty to chew on over the next 80 minutes. And it's definitely become a fixture where each team's targeting the other for victory this afternoon. Amy Turner making two changes in the pack since the loss to Bristol. Ilbia's, Italy's Silvia Tirani chosen to start at hooker. No Bryony Cleal, so Springbok captain Babawa Latch assures up the tight head berth. Scotland Sarah Bonner is vice captain in the back row, where she's been since Danelle Lochner settled in alongside Caitlin Leaney. Shauna Brown, the league's keenest carrier, having done so 107 times this season. Injury sees Rachel Burford hitting this one out. Mayhew coming in at 13, Tuima to 12. And Nay sit outside Emily Scott, making her 100th club appearance today for Quinns. Contract extension to go with her 38 caps and Commonwealth bronze medal. On the bench, the family Robinson reunited as Emily returns from her suspension. Now for Sale Sharks, well, head coach Rachel Taylor has brought a few of the bigger players at her disposal back into the mix after the hefty loss to Exeter. Up front, internationals Katie Benson and Joe Brown come into the front and back rows respectively. Georgie Perris Redding, one of the big game players that we know Sharks fans will be relying on on days like this. And having helped steer the Northerners to their only victory so far this season when they beat Quinns at Haywood Road, Beatrice Ragoni is back in the ten shirt for the first time since that win. Howard and Hangatau form the All-Eagles midfield with Vicky Irwin back at 15. Prothero, a late replacement for Lauren Delaney, who will rue missing an 80-minute opportunity to impress those Ireland selectors. Detaisha Harper, the pick of the replacements, but that injury is for sale, well, including the likes of Moena Talling, Rachel McLaughlin, Lizzie Duffy, Sarah Tunacy, Alicia Washington, Molly Thorpe, Molly Wright, I mean, the list goes on. Oh, great to have Quinns continuing their work on LGBTQ plus inclusion and visibility across the PWR as much as the men's premiership last weekend too. If we can go that extra mile to make everyone feel included in this game of ours, then, well, why shouldn't we? Guard of honour is all in place, ready for our two teams to make their way out. And, well, Mo Hunt has come up the uh, up ladder, joined us in the bird's nest above the stadium to watch this one with us. And uh, it is a game where they're going to be targeting each other, as you spoke about pre-game, Mo. Yeah, 100%. It's a must-win for both of these teams. Led out by Georgie Paris Redden. She's missed a few through injury this year. She's massive to have back in the mix. But just a word on Emily Scott, 100th appearance for the club. She has been absolutely immense for this team, for this club for so long. And it's brilliant to see her get that accolade. Yeah, she'll be leading out the uh, home side shortly. Northern rugby matters for Sale Sharks. It really does. Huge catchment area talent, real responsibility on the shoulders of this club to push on and start that, start to build that Northern powerhouse. That injury list won't be helping them, but the star quality of Rigoni, they're USA internationals, all six of them working among Scots and Irish too. Came down last night, stayed across the road. They will be ready to do battle in this one. Now the replacement's coming out to present the opportunity. And here come Quinns. We're going to have an extended tunnel being created for their 100 capper. Yeah, we don't always see this, but it just shows what Emily Scott means to this girl. As you heard about her in pre-match. They don't care about the prep. They want to give this girl her moment, and they really are. Wonderful moment for Emily Scott. She's one of life's great humans as well. 100th Harlequins appearance. But what about this Harlequin side? Champions just a couple of seasons ago, but how they'd love to be in better form and with more than just the two wins under their belt that they've achieved so far this season. They've Saracens next week, Exeter Chiefs the week after. So they would do well to avoid the visitors dragging them into a lower table dogfight. Those wins that have come against Leicester Tigers, and Ealing Trail Finders. Our referee for this one, Harry Wallbaum, regular on the PWR circuit. Well known to both sides. They'll be assisted by James Connell and Gareth Holgrove. Our TMO is Dan Jones. Live PWR rugby on TNT for your Sunday afternoon. Beatrice Rigoni gets us going. Sale Sharks do tend to start well, usually scoring over half their points inside the opening half hour. Okay, available nine. Use it! First responsibility is going to be that of Lucy Packers. 
puts up the box kick. A little bit of confusion there. It looked like Holly Borden was set for that all day long. Yeah, you say that, but it always is responsibility coming back. You can hear the call coming from behind. You've got to let your 15 take that, especially coming onto the ball when there's that aerial pressure. It's so really nice hard to be underneath that ball. Through. It's a fantastically executed kick from Lucy Packer. Brilliant hang time and a really good chase. Not the start they would have wanted. Well, as the aerial battle goes, 1-0 quins. Find. Brown at the back will pick away for Packer as they look to come down the blind side. And now it's a little bit of footwork doing the business very nicely for Freya Orkin. I've mentioned her pre match, but for me, Georgie Perez Redden is the heartbeat of this Sail Sharks team. She's come from the blind side of the scrum, she's tracked across. Caught the winger, it's a brilliant break, really nice timing on the pass from Lucy Packer. But the intent in that tackle, she's only little, but she really does punch above her weight. Just look at the track and the acceleration into the tackle here. Yeah, not technically perfect. Yeah, she's a bit high around the ball, but she's got an amazing outcome. Knock on into touch, get to pick what they want. Started a season a little later. Having been injured, she missed WXV. Ten caps for the USA, Georgie Perez Redding, but this is Rigoni fizzing it out. That's lovely from Hangatau, and able to send it out onto the wide outside as Prothero. Late one into the starting lineup for Lauren Delaney. Rigoni. That was about as flat as it gets. Nine you've got. Now there's a penalty advantage to the visitors as well. Rigoni just goes for the little dink through the middle, knowing they're under that penalty advantage. Kill done. Oh, will field. Gone for the tight cornrows this afternoon. <laughs> Ellie Kildon. She's rocking those at the moment. Rigoni, for me, is the person that's going to unlock this team. You just see her play. She plays with such a fearless nature. There's no right for her to go. There was only one in the breakdown, first of all, so you've got two runners off ten. Really slow to that breakdown. Quinn's give away that penalty. Just unnecessary. There's no need to compete there. Get out of there. And then she just dinks okay, it off the outside of her boot. Just fantastic. Selected for her attacking shape, chatting to Rachel Taylor yeah. during the week, saying that Rigoni loves front foot ball, but she's understanding how to play without it all of the time, which inevitably you do. Pack is not always going to have things as they might want. So, yeah. I, I have never in my life seen a line out throw <laughs> like that. I'm not sure if we just had a tornado on the far side or what happened there. <laughs> I was about to say, I've not really seen anything like that before. But, Take uh, goal! Back foot. Thank you. Okay, nonetheless, nice. available. There for Harlequins. Use it! Packer. Turned 24 on Friday. Happy birthday to uh, Lucy Packer. Down from Provero. <laughs> no. Big carry, but then it's back in the hands of Iona Antwist. But she coughs it up to uh, back foot, back foot, a fellow second rower playing more back row oh, recently out. in uh, Scotland, Sarah Bonner. Tirani will play, and then Tuima. Through the midfield, but it was never really being controlled by Izzy Mayhew. What about that line out, Mohan? <laughs> Just the one handed up in the air. Quite something. I feel like that was supposed to go over the line out to an on-rushing 12, but the 12's not even coming, so I honestly, I don't even know how to call that one. I'm not going to lie, guys, but hopefully they shore that one up because otherwise we're going to struggle with our words. It's, it's My vocabulary is not big enough, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. It's Find. certainly one of those that if it comes off, it's a great idea, but when it doesn't, Set. it doesn't look so hot, does it? Mary Grieve. International debut for Scotland a whole 10 years ago. Rigoni takes it into contact. Running threat, passing threat, kicking threat. The full package from the Italian international. Point six. 
dig through for Tana Howard. Just wanted to send Quinns back into their 22. Well, he killed Dunn. Just shaped momentarily and uh, is just dancing around, taking a couple of metres either side. Will take anyone to the ball if they wish to go and makes it up to the 22. And Quinns will get a chance to reload. Okay, Still in that area. Available. Use it! Trying to set a sufficient platform for a more controlled exit, but Hannah Sims will have other ideas, and Quinn's content to keep ball in hand as they creep out the 22. Not able to now make a direct clearance out of that area to touch as Babawa Latcher takes up the cudgels, and now it'll be fired back, but this will need to stay in field, so it will bounce on the floor. Howard, right boot into a fair amount of space here. Hungertau is chasing, Kildun's coming across, there's not going to be an awful lot of time for Kildun, or a lot of space, but she is capable of making the most of it, at least she was, until the cavalry arrived from South Sharks, and three of them put her into touch. Yeah, she's really well matched there, isn't she? She gets herself out of some unbelievable situations with that footwork. I really thought we'd have a cagey start to this game, but it doesn't appear to be that way at all. Harlequin's looking to run out of their 22 as well as kick, Interesting for me that they've come outside the 22, as you mentioned, and then chose to kick because they can go straight to touch, and especially the way the line-out just went, would have been a good one to have a go at. I say that, oh. they've absolutely nailed that one into them all. This really is going to be a fasc fascinating contest this afternoon. And one sale stop. They have had this game in their sights, sure. knowing that an underperforming Harlequins could be there to be picked off. Continuing to go forwards. They sail that twice. Use it! Referee tells him it's time to use it. Is the ball there for Grieve? No, not enough. <laughs> Unable to come back once the forward momentum had concluded. Oh, and it might just be bubbling over between Paris Redding and Shauna Brown there as a uh, little bit of kidology. Am I helping you up or am I dragging you up? I don't mind that. You can see what it means to the players. There's a lot of emotion out there. As I said, it, I thought it would be a cagey start. It doesn't appear to be that way at all. Really good, more defence. Mary Green's got her hands on the ball here. There is no way that Harlequin should stop this coming out. See Hannah Sands just holding her in. I think she ends up with the ball between her feet in the end and a brilliant way to stop that ball coming out. But fantastic defence from Harlequins. Bind. Across to Hartbury skipper, Stand English up. Red Rose, Natasha Hunt with us on really, commentary really here at the Stoofers. Okay, really good. We've just got to be patient. Harry Wallman right, just wants to get the these two reset. I'll, I'll do my best, absolutely. Okay, please patient. Nervous Chris, moments mate, yesterday you. afternoon, Miss Hunt, as uh, Gloucester Hartbury found themselves a fair way behind Tigers on the scoreboard. No. <laughs> That's the end. No. Okay, patience, <laughs> no, it, balance, not at all. I had him. It was a brilliant performance from Leicester Tigers. Crouch. They really do grow into a game. They were fantastic. Obviously, Bind. Meg Jones, I know she's listening, so I'll have to give her a shout out Six. for what she does for that club. But the girls were brilliant, the way they controlled themselves and, and their fight back into the game. Unreal. Oh, now this is untidy from the back of the line out, from the back of the scrum, sorry. And uh, Tuim has been carried over. It's going to be an attacking five metre scrum for Sale Sharks. just really hard isn't it Shauna Brown has to do better at the back there she's turned her hip she's allowed that ball to pop out of the back when your scrum's under pressure like that as an eight you've just got to tuck it at the jumper go forward especially this close to your line as a scrum half Lucy Packer does not want to be flinging that ball not knowing where anyone is out to her back line and really good follow-up defense as well from Sale Sharks a real opportunity now their scrum's been pretty Bind. solid. I think they were, they felt quite hard done by last week against Six. Exeter Chiefs. See if they can go to work here. Grieve has got okay, sale stationary. Owen to the left, as well as Borden, but she's going to strike to the right here. Howard nearly getting a chance to just step through midfield. Chance for Sharks to reload. It's not the quickest of balls. Four metres out. Looking to try and get the right players there on standby. Nick James is there is to goal? add her weight to things. Now they go again. Big questions being asked here. Sylvia Tirani 
defending. Now, Rigoni, big miss pass. Oh, it could be a run in here. It is going to be a run in. Etty Hanatown taking the outside line. Rugby can be a simple game when it needs to be. And that was a simple dart on the outside. And Sail Sharks are the first on the board at the stoop. It's brilliant management for me, for Sail Sharks. They've just pinned Harlequins back, pinned Harlequins back. And look at this for a ball. That's what putting Rigoni at 10 does to you. Just the way yeah. that she's fizzed that across the defensive line. Okay. Fantastic arc on the outside. Little dummy, she didn't need it. She'd already beaten Emily Scott on that outside arc. And just knowing that you can pump your legs and get over the line. When you talk about that pass, it's about the fact that she's able to just push the player outside her opposite defender, isn't it? 100%. And also the timing of, of coming onto that ball. So, yes, it's the pass, but it's also allowing that ball to come across the face of you and not trying to catch it too early, if that makes sense. Absolutely brilliant work. Almost starting the drift to player early before it gets to the next one. And now. Magoni, the assister, will assist with the conversion. Most people hold it on the end of the ball. She just loves to do things differently, this girl, and I love that about her. Not quite going to sail through the sticks, but... Uh, Plenty to enjoy regardless. Sail Sharks five on the board. Yeah, brilliant start. It's probably because Rigoni's little finger was pushing it towards the other side. No, we just see this replay again. Just really nice work as you see that ball just fade across Emily Scott. You've got to come forward and you've got to be aggressive when you're that close to your own try line defensively. So really important that you just allow that ball to do the work. It's a great finish. Really good execution. Restart was really contestable, exactly what Harlequins wanted it to be. Nick James not quite tidying it up, but Harlequins have taken this in. No advantage. Knock on from number one. Oh, in fact, the knock on first came from Quinns. It was off Hannah Sims. Nettie <laughs> Hangatau getting that score on a sixth appearance this season. Miss WXV after that horror show tackle on Robin Wilkins against Wales, but we'll hope to be part of that Pacific Four series that uh, we heard this week will mean that the USA host Canada at the end of April to kick off that series. They'll then head to New Zealand, followed by Australia. Bind. Set. In from Grieve. Rigoni. Boot to ball. Stop, stop, oh, absolutely stop. no one over on this good side. That's a really good spot. They'd all framed up on the right hand side, Sail Shark. So as Quinns look to mirror them defensively, okay. Rigoni's found the space. She, al she almost looks surprised at how she is, but it's just brilliant work. As you say, everyone's stacked on the outside. I don't think her teammates know this is coming, but when you can execute a kick as well as that, it doesn't matter if you've got a chase or not. Everyone's stacked. So Mayhew's come in behind the scrum because she's going to be closing as Ellie Kildun's pushing up defensively. It's just a brilliant spot and great execution. Pressure back on. Green's getting going. Shauna Brown with the Tucker. carry in the middle, and we know that she tops the list for the most of those in the PWR, 107 before today. Now Scott will have the chance to power through. And it's Tirani able to offload for Ali Kildun. Kildun with all the pace in the world. Around the outside, the stoop will roar her home. Beautifully worked from Harlequins. The flags will celebrate the score. It's Ali Kildun's second try of the season. Just madness, isn't it? That it's only her second try. Her stats are remarkable this year so far. But it's just a really nice set play. You can see Lucy Packer scooting round, staying nice and square. Emily Scott, brilliant timing of the ball. And as Tunesi gets through the line there, is all I'm thinking is give it Ellie Kildun. We know how devastating she is. One of the quickest in the game. 
Jazz Joyce has probably got something to say about that, but I genuinely think she is. And it's a really nice finish. She doesn't even use her footwork. She just backs herself, pace to the corner. Nothing Vicky Owen can do coming across. Game on. Nelly Kildun, you mentioned those stats. 95 carries, third. We mentioned Shauna Brown is top of that list. Top of the offload charts with 12. But the key one, 46 tackle breaks. She's got out of the clutches of the defenders. Leading the stat in that, and also leading the stat in 892 metres, mate. She's probably just added 100 to that. Absolutely. And she'd only scored one try to this. It's brilliant. Tirani just straightening, timing of the pass, clean set of heels. Caitlin Neely on the outside as well. She just trots on the inside, knowing that she isn't going to get that ball. Just got to make sure you don't have to do the extras at the end. <laughs> Rigoni sends it deep. Brown gave the call and makes the metres. And then one big ball carrier to another. Babawa Lacha scored a couple of tries at okay, Hayward no, Road in that loss that Harlequin suffered up there in November. They will have a score to settle. Quick on-rushing defence from Howard, but Quinns have managed to get the ball away. And Wilcock got support on the inside. It's Ellie Kildun again. Oh, Ellie Kildun. She'll race another one home. She might as well have had a look up to commentary to Mo Hunt and said, if I've not got enough tries this season, how's about a couple for you now? I think it's her streamlined hair, I'm not going to lie. Looking tighter than ever out there, but as this ball gets bit, I was thinking Lucy Packer, brilliant control. You've just scored, really good carry, set up the box. As this comes out to Emily Scott, I thought, what are they doing? They have numbers. Katana flies on the outside, she doesn't need to. That will be a tackle for tw 20 meters behind the gay line, but as it is, you give them that opportunity. And these girls don't need much of an opportunity. Super work from Wilcott just to hold long enough to ensure Rigoni commits. Lange Tuima unable to nail the first one. Came into this game with accuracy of three out of four. Swings the right leg through. That one will do the business. Well, having conceded first, Harlequins have got themselves on the right side of the scoreboard now. As far as the home side are concerned, 12, they lead. Just really nice work, isn't it, from Wilcock, as you see her just straightening, enticing Rigoni to come across, try and make that tackle, knowing that she won't be able to recover back on the inside if she feeds Ellie Kildun on the inside. And another brilliant finish. That Often. is what you call compounding Trump. errors. Little apology from Matthew Chirigoni. I'd be fascinating to know about the mindset of these two teams at the minute because this really does feel like a pressure game. Coaches pre-match, they were talking about the fact that they're going to come out and play. They need to score tries. They want those bonus point win bonus point tries, sorry. So you've got to get four tries in the game. And I thought, you can say that, but it's really difficult when you've come off the back of loss, loss, loss to go Bay and try and play. Yeah, It'd be really interesting to see now whether this sale team Crouch. tighten up, does Rigoni go into her shell? Does she try too hard Bind. and force errors like that? Or can they Set. just ride this wave and was that just a one-off? Yeah, how much is it just about victory at all costs? Scott pumps one dummy, Kildun joins the line. Packer back in, Bonner. And release, tackle. Tirani helping with the clear out. Scott again. Far left for Kildun, but they're keeping it a little hot potato, Quinns, and that's the way they like to play around these parts, whether it's the men or the women. Latcher gets the call out the back from Scott once more. Miss pass. Mayhew. 
needed Wilcox to come in and try and secure it because Sale have got themselves in a good position for the turnover. And it's a quick tap, and it's straight to Rigoni. Had the call on the outside. Need to be careful, though, that Holly Borden's not isolated, and in fact, into touch she goes. Thank you. Harlequins will have the line out, but Hannah Sims is just Time down off. and looks uncomfortable. Oh dear. Yeah, it's really good cover, D, isn't it? Nice and high on the outside. Kill Dunn and Lini adding their weight, just making sure that ball gets shepherded into touch. Just interesting decision for me, as I just mentioned about Rigoni trying too hard, trying to force things. You've just won a penalty. This game is so in the balance at the minute. Just kick into the corner, get into the 22. The last line out was really good, so we could actually play our line outs. We know that now. <laughs> Go to the more game. Offering sure. your coaching insights here, yeah. Natasha Hunt. James. I imagine that's what's being said in this huddle now. Sure. Just, yes, we want to go after, yes, we want to play. But actually, it's OK, we can play in the right areas. That's what they did in the first five minutes. That's why they went ahead on the scoreboard. Rigoni, one of those in there, letting her voice be heard. Plenty more sport coming up for you on TNT Sports. Serie A action tonight, 7.30, Inter against Juventus. You can watch that one on TNT Sports 1. If you fancy a bit of Ligue 1 action, yeah. Lyon against Marseille is TNT Sports 2. That one is also at 7.30. Yeah. Take your pick whether you're following the Italians or the French for your footballing fix tonight. And then... Next week, Saracens against Harlequins, TNT Sports 1, midday kickoff, that one. More Allianz Premiership women's rugby action for you then. That will be an absolute cracker as the two London sides go head-to-head. -head. You can also stream the games on Discovery+. Plus. We are going to be in for a, a little bit of a pause here because, uh, well, Hannah Sims went down and looked in some discomfort. We obviously don't want to uh, focus too much on her discomfort or, indeed, the injury. But rest assured, the medics are doing their best to make her comfortable. Looks like a lower limb injury at the minute. Yeah. Ellie Kildun just getting the chat in as well as Ross Chisholm, the attack coach, joins. She's probably asking what high speed she hit on the last two tries. Yeah, how quickly have the stats come through, please, team? I am fascinated by Ellie Kildun's stats, though. I think we just uh, mentioned no, earlier, 95 carries, which is third at the moment in the PWR. 892 metres made. She's probably already surpassed 1,000 in this game. 12 offloads, which is first. 46 tackle breaks, which is first. Yet, she's been turned over 20 times, so she has conceded the most amount of turnovers in the league. Now, how much of that is because her teammate can't keep up with her? or they're not anticipating these breaks. Like, where, where is that coming from? I think that, for me, is a massive mindset thing and something that probably will be delved into a lot in-house. If you're an attack-minded player and you're making those metres upfield, how aware do you have to be to slow down, find your support? I mean, surely your, your job is to use maximum speed and get as far up as you can. A hundred percent. I think you're attack-minded. You've got to just back yourself within every inch of, of what you've got. And, you can see that that's what she does. Like 46 tackle breaks is an insane amount. I think that rivals Marcus Smith, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Him going into the Six Nations with those stats was unbelievable. But you've got to, you've got to just back yourself. For me, it's the an the anticipation of it. So what are the cheat lines to get after her? How are her teammates actually helping her? And and how hard are they working to get there? Well, with Hannah Sims out, interesting that uh, Harlequins. Have uh, no doubt decided to just shift Sylvia Tirani across <laughs> from her hooker role. She is a prop turned hooker. They're opting to bring Connie Powell on. Well, it's a big pause, plenty of time for plenty of thinking. Um, and I wonder what the thinking is of Rachel Taylor. She's uh, down talking with LJ. 
Tails, an interesting start, but it saw a bit of Beatrice Rigoni as we kind of hoped we would, but you've conceded two since then. So what's the plan now? Yeah, I thought we started really well. Probably didn't convert the opportunities that we got really early on, and the ment uh, momentum's definitely swung with the Quins at the moment. Uh, Ellie Kildun looks really sharp on transition, so that's something we'll have to keep an eye on and make sure that we've got our width in defence, for sure. But I think once we keep the ball a little bit more, we look, we look, we look sharp as well, so we've got creating enough opportunities for attack. I, I asked Georgie before the game how much confidence playing with a player like Rigoni gives the team, and it does look like she lifts them. Is that something you want them to feel? Is that a way to get air in the tyres of these girls? Yeah, definitely. And look, we, we've had a tough run of games and a tough run of results for sure. And I think she she breeds that confidence and enjoyment of the game, which is massively important for us. You know, we, we want to play with smiles on our faces. It means a lot to the players to do that. So she certainly gives them a lot of confidence. And this early change for Quinn is obviously going to unsettle them. We've just seen them lose that line out. How much do you need to strike now? Strike whilst the iron's hot? Yeah, uh, hope, hopefully that uh, player is okay. Looked like a, a serious injury. But um, yeah, certainly trying to take this thing out of the game a little bit. We'll see now, obviously, because uh, Quinn's have gone straight into attack and transition. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks, LJ. Good to hear from Rachel Taylor, former Wales International, his head coach, <laughs> Sales Sharks. Okay. Um, Thank you. Okay, Referee Harry Wallbaum has uh, just stopped play. Sorry. Not okay. entirely sure why. Let's just have a listen in. Okay, I don't know why she's shouting. Um, the fourth official and the, um, the advice that we can't restart, so we've got a doctor ready here. Oh, okay, fine. What will we restart with? Uh, we can do the okay, so it's just. No, uh, so. Who was in possession, James? No. Quins. A logistics yeah. Quins matter, in, possession, in fact, because it's one of these moments that. The uh, game, yeah? Because the okay. matchday doctor is no doubt just seeing two go, yeah? kind of sims. OK, thank you. So we need to make sure that there is somebody on duty for the match that's taking place live. But yeah. it sounds like that has now been resolved. Rosie, just let me know if we're way off on the mark. I it's do going to be a scrum, really enjoy Quinn's that. ball. There you hear, scrum, Quinn's ball. But Emily Scott, she wanted okay, to come 25 metres back up the pitch and restart okay, with the line yeah, they've sorry, just lost. The right really nice Rosie. try, though. It was Five. worth an effort, surely. OK, scrum, <laughs> Quinn's ball. I love how probing the kicks are from Ragoni at the moment going in. It just checks the line speed from Harlequins because every time you're trying to come off the line, you're trying to put pressure on. Especially a player like Ragoni, you have to shut her down early because you know she's got the whole box of tricks. So every time they're doing that, Prince. she's saying, OK, I'm just going to put it in behind you, which will play on the Harlequins' defensive Five. minds. Like how much line speed do they actually go after her? It will Six. then free her up to have that running game, that passing game. Back with Packer. Mayhew on the outside tried to get the offload away. It wasn't that tidy, but it was a bit of a high shot. Was that from Rigoni? So Coons will have the penalty. Good D from Hanger Tower, though. You think that she's gone on the outside, Mayhew's bit of footwork, but just really good positioning. Comes high enough up in the line. That she doesn't allow her to go, thinks that she's got the outside break and unfortunately just slips up on that tackle. You see her trying to knock the hand down, that's why as Mayhew's ducking, she's trying to knock that hand down so she can't get the, the offload away. Or that handoff away. <laughs> that was my words I was trying to find. There we go. Emily Scott now, then for Mayhew, who had the arriving Shauna Brown ready to pull into the station, which she did, and then Tuima killed Dunn. Working hard to try and find room for Wilcott. Back in, Tirani. Got through a few good carries herself, the Italian international teammate of Rigoni at Sale Sharks. That was certainly a low one to take, but Brown did really well. And then Connie Powell, the replacement, who is on. Having had Sims make way and the chance of the break through the middle. Mayhew. No hands now. Offload took a bit more airtime than perhaps might have wanted. The collision as Vicky Irwin comes forward. Hey, tackle release. Back in, took a bump a couple of weeks Good back against now, Tigers. Lost. Missed the visit Thank you. of Exeter Chiefs. Ellie Kildun has just hightailed it back into the backfield and Rigoni is looking over to the right side where Emily Scott is heading, but also, well, 
going to say so is Pomeroy, but actually Scott has managed to get around her and the ball played back backwards. in. Wasn't taken from Mayhew, but referee says backwards. And a little bit of the footwork from Bonnet there for Lucy Packer, but it's been lost already. And that is the super work of Iona Antwis. Dependable Antwis, she's been playing in that second row with a number five on her back all season, scoring against trail finders. But that was all about the turnover from the former Gloucester Hartbury player. Paul has not made touch though. Kildare has got an opportunity to send it back, which she does comfortably. Yeah, I just want to look at this kick. It's really nice vision from Ragoni, but if she'd have gone a beat earlier, Emily Scott was in the backfield. She was on this near side touchline and she was only just working across. So much space back there after she put that kick through. Nobody's working back for Harlequin. So if ragoni has got that vision, I just wanted to pull the trigger that little bit sooner. It was a really nice spiral though, wasn't it? All right, over. Ragoni. Oh, that is a, a wayward pass, and uh, Ellie Kildan is going to get on the end of it. There may only be one result to this. Already two tries to her name, and Sales Sharks are going to effectively watch her score her third. Ellie Kildan makes it a hat-trick. After 25 minutes at the stoop, you cannot afford to give the Red Rose that kind of room. It's a brilliant finish, isn't it? You can see her hands on head, seeking for oxygen at the minute, but really poor execution on the pass. You can see what Sail Sharks are trying to do. They have to be better there. And you heard Rachel Taylor say about it, the turnover ball, Ellie Kildun is murdering them on it. You do not want to give her any inch at all, let alone 15 meters and an outside break. It's a brilliant pickup. She does not break stride. Having had to chase her for many years, playing on different teams, she really is very, very quick. That's just not good enough for me, though, for a USA international to be throwing a ball like that. You can see what it means on her face. And it's one error and one score conceded. That's the uh, true value of the mistake. That is a lovely conversion effort from Lani to Ema. She's over the 50-point mark now in terms of her league tally. Had a contract extension in June, Langi Tuima, but what about Kildun? Hat-trick on the board already. Her season stats will now say four tries, which is more what we expect of any Kildun, but three of them have come this afternoon. Yeah, she'll be very glad. She will have been hunting that. But you can just hear it's given the crowd a lift, it's given the Quinns players a lift. They're playing a lot more freely now. They can throw these offloads <laughs> that's happening. Whereas Sale will have to button down a little oh, bit more. They need there. to now keep the possession. They're trying to do things at the breakdown, giving away penalties. Starting to unlock them. 19 points to five as well. We'll just start to allow Quinns that little bit more freedom, as Mo Hunt mentions. Come. Goni looking to temporarily challenge at the breakdown, but wasn't really on. Packer, little look left, goes right, gets the call from Scott. Oh, nearly finding oh, space to put Latcher through the hole. Thanks, Has a little rueful shake okay, of the head. Clear the tackle zone, please. I'm not sure tackle. whether it's a fatigue element yet. I would challenge that because Sale scores so many of their points in the opening 30 minutes, so I wouldn't have said it's a fatigue thing but their line speed's just dropped off. So is that now a mindset that they don't want to come out, they don't want to like make errors and jump out of that defensive line? It's just allowing yeah, right. Quinns more freedom. Emily Scott catching the ball, coming onto it, picking her option. She's got three runners off her. She's got the time and space to be able to now choose which option she wants. It's going to be a hard day at the office unless Sale can rustle back some, muscle back sorry, some of this momentum. OK, Lucy, stay 10. Lucy, thank you. Quins go to the tail. Connie Powell will latch herself onto the back. And there will be a splinter group that go forwards. Shauna Brown, one of those, leading the secondary charge. Okay, Quins, that's one. 
into the 22 Headband now. Is legal through the middle. Five is legal. They've got to try and wrestle it back here. Is it there Start for Packer? Quins. They've been told to try and use it, but they've got to try and get hold of it first. Sail Sharks have done a super spoiling job. They've got themselves possession back. For all the money, it looked like Harlequins were building up another head of steam. That's a valuable breather. I also enjoyed that from the referee. Headband is legal. Yeah. Iona Antwist coming through. Okay, find really good job, there. just targeting ball. <clears throat> it's a great initial setup, but for me, the ball was transferred before there was anyone from Sale attached to that, so it should have been a penalty the other way. Lovely shift drive, and then just look at the work of Iona Antwist over the top, targeting Friends. ball, managing to splinter, get through the seams. Find. And there's only one person winning that battle. Sit. And generally, it's not a scrum half. If I was Iona Antwis, I'd uh, instead of getting a T-shirt done that just says five, headband five, is five. legal. <laughs> Quite like that. <laughs> Penalty goes the way of Sail Sharks. Chance for Rigoni to take them a little closer to the halfway line. It's a good kick. I just mentioned Sail need to wrestle back some of this momentum. That's two really good outcomes from their forwards. Really nice more defence. When it looked for all money, Quinns were going to march the length. And then a penalty at scrum time. Looks like they're going into a more setup now. Can they get anything from this? Over inside five more. Leaves Wales. Under 20 hooker. Coming on very nicely through her time at Sales Sharks. Joined the club 18 months ago, former DMP. And now it's away from Green. Miss pass into the middle. Angatau with the carry, now Rigoni, she wanted it quickly. And coming across to the left, oh, it's another careless ball pass. It's just that execution. Ball, quick, Catch pass. Sail Sharks uh, just need to line. sharpen up on. Gone forward into touch. It's really hard, isn't it, as you're going so far laterally across the pitch to, to sh throw that shoulder to square Emily, the defence up please. and then throw that ball. Scrum call, thank you. But you've got to do better. They're creating the space, they're creating the opportunities. It's just that last pass, like you said, that little bit of execution. Take the miss pass out of it for me, just go hands. Can you just go four metres rather than trying to fling the 12 metre pass? Who knows, maybe it's really windy on that far side. Because we saw that first initial line-up, which I'm still not over, by the way. <laughs> Talking to Rachel Taylor during Come the week, on, I mean, she said at times a lot of teams can get a bit restrained with shape and the way they want to play, but ultimately it's a going forward evasion game. Certainly backs Beatrice Rigoni as one of those that Crouch. sometimes when some of the players might be overthinking it, she'll be the one to just get them going forwards. Do you know what I would be saying though? Keep doing it because it's working, it is just Set. that last pass. Like two opportunities you've had, they would have been clean line breaks if that ball had stuck. So, yes, it's the execution, just be really sure on that. Lovely short line. Wilcox stepping in. Oh, and still going. This has got the opportunity to be another stunning score on the stoop. Beth Wilcox started in that title winning side in 2021. And the former England Sevens player has carved a way through. Bonus point secured. Which is massive for this Harlequins team. It's just really simple. M1, miss pass and a little lift on the outside. You should not be scoring tries off a move like that. Just in and out is a lovely arcing run. Take nothing away from the finish. It is a lovely arcing run. But just the timing of the pass, the pace that Wilcox coming onto that ball. And like I said, just the in and away, really, really classy finish. But ultimately, first is D. Sale should be doing better. To Ema. Two on the board so far. Oh, that one. 
similar curve to the previous ever that went through, but that one just started a bit too central and faded away. The Quinn's up to 24 now. Yeah, it's really nice whip in the tan. And as I said, just that in and away, you see her coming back towards the stand on the far side and then just bounces out, has the pace to finish on the outside. Really nice restart from Magoni. Shauna Brown barging away through once more. OK, Lucy, that's available. Use it! You've had, you've had. Good wingers on side. Good take. Breathe. Just a no, little stretch of the run from Swales. Goni talked about South Sharks line speed. It was strong there from Harlequin to shut down the space that Joe Brown had. Having signed from Worcester this season, Brown. Packer did really well to take that on the full, given when the kick was released, she was a good 25 metres away from where it was due to land. Quinn's back carrying, back going through holes with Abby Fleming. Wales international. Brown again, smuggles the ball. No. Nope. Ball back inside, kill done. Just on the shoulder of Emily Scott. Still going, kill done. Reminiscent of the two playing in England sevens days. Then Packer, little one over the top. Oh, and that's bobbling around dangerously. Needs to be dealt with. Now it's been knocked on. The harrying and hassling work. And is he made you in there? Do you know what? I love that both sides of the ball. It's a brilliant nudge by Packer. Just a little roller out over the yeah, yeah. <laughs> over the defence, sorry, but Prothero read it so so well. That bounce is so unfortunate because as soon as she sees Packer shape, she runs back. I thought for all money that she had it covered. That's why you should never let the rugby ball bounce. But it's just really good work, both sides. We saw Izzy Mayhew putting the pressure on defensively there, but fascinated by the role she's played in attack for Harlequin today because this season we've seen Rachel Burford at 12, Laggy Tuima at 13. With Burford out with the injury, it's giving Mayhew an opportunity, and whether it's the tight lines, whether it's been putting other people into space, having not played a ton of time in that position this season, going pretty well. Yeah, she's going Five. really well at the minute. As we mentioned, the outside break. Six. She had up, down in her own 22, the timing of the pass and just the squaring of her shoulders for the last Wilcock try was fantastic as well. Been very Tackle. impressed with her start. Powell. Harlequin's initially looking Tackle to go again. down that front side. Erica Jarrell nearly getting the chance to wrestle that one away, but it's Latcher. Hacker floating it up to Rani. Direct running from the Italian. Powell again. Had to try and check the footwork, but there's a body right in the way. Nine, you've got advantage. Powell is wriggling on the floor. Tuima popped it up for Scott. It's gone backwards. There is an advantage being played, and Harry Wallbaum temporarily is allowing Twins to see if anything comes from it, but he will bring play back now. Packer. Quick to find the mark. Time off, Rosie. We have a look, please, mate. Now we. Uh, we have to look at our there from the wing. We just want to check. Harry Wolbam going upstairs. I think this will be re really hard if this is anything but a penalty. It looks for all money that Bowden just hits the ball in the tackle. It's 11 blue. Not in the position to make a tackle there. Left arm's outstretched. And you've got players in motion in. Uh, so David in Rose is uh, no, our TMO. Uh, penalty try, obviously, there. But the left arm does yeah. come, come out. It's, it's, can we just get the wide angle, Rosie? It's definitely a deliberate knock on. I just want to check. We're looking at the yellow card as well, where we are on the field. This is the next angle with a with wide angle, Harry. Just bear with me. Yeah. So here it comes now. That's the one. Yes, there is a player outside, but it's still a three on two. So I think yellow card number 11. 
Okay, deliberate knockoff with a player on the outside. Number 11 goes to the bin. That puts 11. me back in my place. Well, Holly Borden is uh, 11. Deliberate knock on. A, a yellow card here for deliberate knock on. Players yeah. just can't yeah. leave a trailing high arm going okay, into a tackle in any way these days because they interfere sorry, with the sorry, flight sorry, of the ball. Sorry, 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 sorry. And with players on the outside, meters, potential three on two, meters. as you may have heard Harry Walbaum, our referee, say, okay. means it's. Five, five, five thwarting an attacking opportunity, so Sale Sharks, last thing they needed was to go down to 14. I think what's so important about that as well is the description and the explanation about why Harry's given what he's given in that moment. Can't really argue with that. I'm going to write that down. Harlequins look to try and engage, but the sack strong. Oh, now it's a penalty. Legal sack and then eight in front. Shauna Brown found herself in front of her teammates there. Georgie Perris Redding wants the ball away from Connie Powell. It's really good tactical play, isn't it, from Sale Sharks? They didn't get a lot from trying to defend the last more. I know it was outside the 22, so potentially not as many people engaged from a defensive point of view, but. That close to the line, the best way to defend is just to sack it. Emily, Sacked it brilliantly. Penalty. They need to put the ball on the ground. OK, if it happens again. And as you heard, Shauna you. Brown in front, so penalty against. Last couple of minutes then of the first half. Long one over the top, but Bauer Latcher was right on hand. Two latch onto it. Packer. Unable to quite get the quick ball that she wanted because Beatrice Rigoni had gone over the ball, but hands went beyond the ball first. It's crushing, I was just about to say, if they can see out these two minutes, get into half-time, regroup, refocus. Got another massive defensive effort now. This next play is mega in the context of this game. If Rachel Taylor can get some positive words into a team at half time if they can't concede here, it's going to be about rebuilding that belief about what they've come down here to do. But Quinns will be looking to build this from the catch and drive. Really good drills right at the top of the jump. Great throw from Connie Powell. Advantage collapsed by Blue. It's not a legal collapse as far as the referee says, so they've got it. Opportunity to play at Quinn's. Emily Scott tying up the crossfield kick. But it is a penalty against Nick James, the USA international. I love that players try and kick on an advantage. I love that they have the freedom to do that. But I really wish that it didn't have to be the first phase of every advantage. Like just play. Emily Scott there is not in a position to kick that ball and get a good outcome. Take the contact, set yourself up and go again next phase. You still get to come back for the line out. Preach, Mo, preach. It's <laughs> what I think whenever I'm watching an international. Oh, you've got an advantage. You just could, play. You, could, you could try one of those things that will help you score. Oh, no, you've just put, thrown away an opportunity that will come to nothing. Right, that line out has not gone straight. So uh, Quinns have thwarted their own opportunity to get that score. And Sale Sharks, well, they now just have a defensive job to do to get this ball cleared and get in for half-time. Commentator's curse, isn't it? I was just bigging up the last line out. Top of the jump, top of the lift. Really nice execution into the mall. Brought the penalty and then that one just... laps of concentration, Five. not straight. Mary Grieve. Fires it back for Rigoni who will drop the ball over the touchline to take us to the break. Well, Harlequins have got themselves the four-try bonus point in the first half, and it's come about through an Ellie Kildun hat-trick. She's rather demonstrating that she wants us to combine her season 23-24 showreel here at the Stoop this afternoon. Sale Sharks have got some work to do to get back into this. Rachel Taylor will certainly be giving them the tools to do so in the second half. Analysis to come shortly. But at half-time, it's Harlequins 24, Sale Sharks 5. It's going to be Harlequins through Kildun that will get the second half underway.
man on them, please. Kildan flips the short Not kick. Again, a little like the first half, the first touch from Sale Sharks has brought about the error. And Kildan tried to thread that through. It will be the Harlequins lineup. It's a great start, isn't it, for Harlequins? Talking about exactly what they'll do off the kickoff. Pressure on, high hanging yeah, restart so hard when you're just a sitting duck waiting for it to land on you. All of the chasers coming at you in your eye line. And then I love that they've just come out the back door, out the back door, out the back door and gone to the whip. Great play. Powell. Backwards. A really good line out to find Leaney, but it's gone a little wayward once it got into Back midfield. Peyton and Leaney working with South African Donnell Lochner in that second row. Leaney stayed out on the touchline and threw it towards the whitewash, and they just managed to get it down in order for yeah. Sale Sharks to win themselves the line out. Quinn's yours. Yeah, it was just a bit clunky, wasn't it, from Harlequins? Really quite prescribed of where they were going, how they were doing it. And good defence from Sale. They had to get her into touch, though, because they threw five people into that tackle. So important for them to do so, make sure they get possession back. New international coach, of course, for Caitlin Leaney. Joe Yap, former Worcester head coach, who uh, is now head coach of Australia. They will be hosting Canada and the USA in May. Then on to New Zealand, part of that Pacific Four series. Oh, oh, Shauna Brown spotted a chance to go oh, straight through. Play on. Just got scragged. Now it's Latcher into Rigoni. Tirani gets the call. Scott. Oh, and Lochner was eyeing up the offload the whole way, Lochner, but best thing was just to keep the head down. Now it goes from Tuima through Mayhew. Mayhew still going. Packer. Ball lovely out in front of Tirani. Tackle. Paris Redding gets herself out of the way. Now they go short side again, Quinns. No Not a whole lot of room there. Oh, is that the finish in the score? Goodness me. No room to work in. Absolute strength. Izzy Mayhew topping off what was a super first half performance and now getting herself a try. Yeah, it's really well worked, isn't it? You can just see the intent of Harlequins just getting back up and reloading that short side all the time. Initial break by Shauna Brown. She's always lurking around the breakdown looking for that. Just the way that they're trying to keep the ball alive. Lovely out the back door. I don't mind this. Just going nice and hard, straight, direct. Keeping the defence off, uh, honest, sorry. And lovely dummy and straight, and again by Mayhew in the build-up. Great leg drive. And then a nice four just across. You've just got to keep hold. Excellent. Brilliant work from Mayhew, knowing the laws to the T. Not held, can get back up and can have another go and crawling across her knees manages to get that ball over the line. Unafraid of taking Hungertow on as well. Rather her than me. <laughs> Quinn's up to 29. Conversion not quite there, but Lucy Packer treated to go back down the short side. They have plenty there. They have plenty of work to do. Hungertow and Paris Redding. We know that Jody Ansley's taking part in Gladiators, but. Uh, that was the sort of work that we're used to seeing there by Izzy Mayhew. <laughs> Lovely break this time again. It's from the tall frame of Lochner. And now Scott almost sensing a chance to go herself in the end. So Sharks have got to be careful here because Harlequins have got their tails up with the tries beginning to rein in and it's a bit early in the second half for it to get too loose. Kill done. Oh, spotted a chance to thread it through. Is it going to be another one for Wilcock? Can she gather it? Yes, she can! Centre-mate 
shouting from Harlequins. And a second try for Beth Wilcox. You can almost see the shock on the Harlequins faces. Caitlin Leaney there on screen. Beth Wilcock as well, just the smiles across them. It's all just clicking for them at the moment. They all need to get some line speed in defence. They're just making it easy. Brilliant carry from Lock and a lovely little pass from Connie Powell on the outside. And Emily Scott here. So often, English rugby players, this is what we do. We look for someone else rather than taking the space that's in front of us. So good to see her eventually pin her ears back. And when the ball bounces your way, the ball bounces your way, you know? See Ellie Kildun in the background, arms in the air. Brilliant Thanks. assist just a really nice option as well defenses are closing on the outside so that you know that that space is going to be opening up when you come two three four balls away from the breakdown I know you call your place the circus Mo Hunt down at Gloucester Hartbury but uh, you need a tightrope walker well I think Beth Wilcock has just done quite the job yeah. tiptoeing yeah, down that touchline I wondered where you were going with that and if you were about to call Harlequins the circus I was going to get Loki offended but <laughs> You saved it well. No, it's so true. It's a fantastic finish. And a reason not to give up on any ball. So important that you just keep chasing, because I thought for all money that was going into touch. But on screen, you see Beth Wilcock just keeps going after the ball. Great catch on your shoulder, one hand. Really good work. Very well positioned, Lino as well. Look at that. That is as close as it gets. The players are sure she's gone out. We have had a good look at that. Brilliant from Wilcock. Inside. Kill done. Sends it downfield. Irwin. In for Rigoni. Rigoni. Half step in. Steps back. Latcher. South Africa. Brings down the Italian Maverick. Oh, that was loose, though. Forward it goes. OK, come on, fair hooker. Good. Same messages from the first half to patients on the calls. Thank you. The South Sharks, having been down to 14, are now back up to the full complement. But uh, instead of Holly Borden coming on, Rachel Woosey has been the one to replace. Trout. And you may notice that Detasha Harper Five. is on. Six. <laughs> okay, my fault, Sander, my fault. Harper's replacing Nick James. Here you come. Yeah. It will go for slightly, but it's pretty sandy everywhere here. Um, just both hookers, just take some weight off, please, on the bind. OK? Only weight off on bind, thank you. Patience, please. Binds that side, loose head, nice and high, tight head, same. Nice and long. Third appearance of the season for Rachel Lucy. Played in all three of the cup Trout. games for South Sharks as well. Binds! Rugby League St Helens as well. Set. Away. Scott. Tweema. Wilcock. Oh, just barges through Vicky Owen. Oh, the offload didn't go to hand for Scott, though. The excitement for the opportunities is now perhaps causing Harlequins to just search a little more for that extra offload that might not be as on. But we know that Wilcock is... Uh, Lying up a hat trick of her own. It's just brilliant intent in the carry, isn't it? Nikita Provro has played back row, so you expect her to make that hit. She's just staying nice and high again. I think they're just trying to fix too much. Just make your tackle reset. Defensively, it's so much easier when you get a side to the edge because there's only one way to play, so you can get your line speed on that next phase. She's trying to get her into touch there, which is why she's gone so high, but lucky for sale, they've got another opportunity to reset. Just need to hold on to the ball. I know that they're Set. near their own 22, but just need a bit of possession in this game. Grieve, Rigoni, dummy switch with Howard, then Hungertown. Now they might have found a little bit of room. 
throw the rope. Carries it forwards. Pick from Rigoni. That's that go forward that Rachel Taylor was talking about. There's a good couple of metres made as well in the carry. Tasha Harper. She was a dummy runner, but she was actually through a hole and through her head, her hand to her head. I think she wanted it. Hangatau, though, who makes the carry on the outside. There's some decent meterage. Rigoni calls it behind Harper. This is better continuity from Sale Sharks. Option on the inside. Rigoni didn't fancy it. Irwin. And on the outside, Wusi. Brought down by Packer. Good, good. No, don't push her back into it. Play on. Tackle. Hyper, Harper. Tasha Harper is uh, trying to take whoever's on the ground with her. Latcher trying to be as strong an anchor as she possibly could, but Riccone will uh, no doubt want to have a sit down and a chat with Harry Walbam about his view of a forward pass compared to <laughs> Little puff of air so that one was. A little out of sorts. Yeah, there's no argument there. Well, there is for Rigoni, I'm not sure how, but... Find that, please. It's just really hard, isn't it? Because she's trying to challenge the line, she's trying to stay nice and flat. But to do that, you need your attackers to be set off you. You don't need them flat in the space where you're trying to get the ball to, if that makes sense. But that's a different sale to me. They kept ball, they played the phases. I think that must have been about 10, 11 phases. And they've made over 50 metres. That should be now the blueprint of how they attack the rest okay. of this game. So Quinta just made a change, incidentally. We've seen Izzy Mayhew okay, uh, yeah. make way after a brilliant game. And we've uh, also seen Ella Cromack come on there with the number 22. She was called into uh, John Mitchell's Red Roses training squad in mid-January. So, Mo, you'll have had a chance to see her there, just 18 years of age. And, uh, well, while Mitchell might quite like the look of the youngster, it's also an interesting decision as to now where she's going to slot in into this back line because... They're happy for her to play 10, 12. It looks like she is going to play outside Emily Scott. Yeah, she looks to be slotted into that 12, which we haven't seen a lot of this season yet. But just brilliant to see her getting the opportunity to run around, to learn from people in the, that Red Roses camp. Just a shout out to Izzy Mayhew, though. I think that's one of the best games I've seen her play in the quarters. I think she's been brilliant both sides of the ball. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Wilcott once more. Sharks defence drifted Back across on. sufficiently enough to have two or three bodies as a welcoming party for Wilcock that Bonnets. time. Brown has just thrown that one a little yeah, forwards. Yeah, that would be a turnover, no advantage, knock on. Or at least it was knocked on. Yeah, that's Harlequin's 10th handling <laughs> error there. I think a few of those have come in the last five minutes, like you mentioned, just trying too hard, trying to get that offload away. It's really important that what they've been doing is working, so you don't need to change it. Like, just because you're up by this much on the scoreboard, just keep going through process. Really good to then embed the players coming in. Make sure those like Cromack just settles into the game, gets a good foothold, and then you start to go to work again. What about the value of this sort of performance for someone like Amy Turner? Sat there alongside Steve Brown. Halsey and Tabai Matson. It's been a tough few weeks. Five. Harlequins only with two wins on the board before today. No Six. foregone conclusions, of course, but 34-5 up. Wants to see her team clicking, wants to see it work as Sail Sharks break with Paris Redding. I think it's so important that they go after the performance as well because I'm pretty sure their run of games is Exeter Saracens lost the heart breeze, so that is a pretty brutal run in. Kilgun is breathing down the neck here of Prothero. Manages to get hold of her as well. Oh, and Quinns will get the penalty. No release on the floor. All about the chase there by Kildun to put the pressure on. Yeah, it really was. You, you can just see how hungry she is. I think we always talk about it in big games. You need big players to step up, and today I really feel like Ellie Kildun has stepped up. 
She's got three tries to her name. She's got an assist to her name. But just her work rate in and around the place, she's covering so much backfield space at the moment. She comes from about 10 meters behind there. Lucy Packer's in the space and she's just gone after it, eating up the ground and a really good tackle, which in turn forces the turnover. They might be sale sharks, but ten or, ten or two, first thought of seeing uh, Ellie Kildun chasing her down and then the panic on Prothero, it was like a killer whale going after a sea lion. Ball. Nicely done, Nick. There with Powell. There's a sense of inevitability about this as Harlequins continue the momentum, now they break to the left. It didn't work for them earlier, but Powell is going to be there and the ball is down. Harlequins with their seventh try. The cheer from Sarah Bonner, perhaps a reflection of how much she knows, how much Harlequins know. They need this sort of performance to give them the confidence for weeks to come, as much as to dispatch Sale Sharks this afternoon. Yeah, it's a brilliant setup, isn't it? We spoke pre match about their little trip to Italy. Quite a few of them have gone. Love to know how much of this performance is fueled by pasta and wine, but it's just fantastic. A like, really good setup, great drills again at the line out. Really nice long train away. You see Connie Powell with the ball in hand at the back, Lucy Packer marshalling really well. And then just the timing of when to shear off and break away. Abby Fleming at the front, just working it over. Connie Power with the finish. Cromack handed the kicking duties, but that one will not quite get there. But Quinn's up to 39 now. the changes obviously Shauna Brown the top carrier for the whole league Ella Cromack coming in really strong performance from Mayhew just allows them to get some experience and some minutes into these girls and also rest them ahead of a, a big few weeks and I'm using saw Shauna Brown in front of the carry earlier where that penalty was given away but a couple of those malls it looks like she's been instrumental in deciding when to make that break and I'm using She's really enjoying life back in the back row at Harlequins, of course. Her time with England, Simon Middleton, and relationship with club really encouraging Brown to get into that front row, but uh, she enjoys her time in the loose no! as a back row forward. Grieve, Harper, miss pass from Tasha Harper. Love that from Harper, just slotting in where you expect your 10 to be, out the back door of that forward pod. Throwing the miss pass to the wing. Back again, play on. Doesn't matter what number's on your back when you got the skills. Absolutely. Two times Six Nations winner with the Red Roses. Oh, and now Paris Redding coming through the gap, looking for the offload on the inside. That's nice to find Howard. Beautiful skill set from Georgie Paris Redding. Rigoni, just a little netball pass back inside. She's gesturing out the right. Oh, that's beautiful from Rigoni. The little tip on. She was signalling the whole time to Prothero. Stay wide, I know where you are. Back in field it comes. Benson, USA International, ships it on. Sail Sharks haven't had a huge amount of visits into the Harlequins 22. Can they keep their composure here? Well, no is the answer. Might be one for the commentator's curse on me, that one, Mo. Oh, it's just crushing from a sales spark, Sharks perspective, isn't it? Such nice build-up, two unbelievable touches by Rigoni on screen. Twins on the edge. Just really nice, patient play. Look at that, over the shoulder. Okay, yeah. If that, if that was a try, that would have been the best assist we've seen all season. Really good work from, from Robinson to come across and make that cover tackle. But you just want it to click for them. They deserve another try out of this. I feel like it's coming. They just need to stay true to what they're doing at the moment. Sail Sharks have been struggling to find points 
this season. There is a lot of positive stuff that's going on, but just averaging 12 points a game. Howard. Another solid carry and drive from Katana Howard. Reading. Paris Reading working really well. Oh, and it's still allowed space for Mary Greve. Oh, what a finish from Greve. Never lost the belief that she'd have the ability to get to the line. That's a solid score. Yeah, it's a really solid score. Her legs were almost running away from her there as she was trying to reach that desperation to get over, but it's a really good finish. Again, nice flat ball, really good carry in the middle, just denting that Harlequin's defence. And just a change in tack, pick through the mid and middle, great offload. Evades the first tackle, a little shimmy into out, and then just again on your knees, cool into that line. Really good work by the scrum half. Former forward Waterloo player, of course, home of the great Jill Burns. Sales second try after seven visits to the 22. Vicky Irwin then. Twenty six points over the course of the season so far. And another two to her tally. So Sharks up to twelve then. Well, we mentioned what an accomplished display it was over the minute she was on the field, and uh, she's now pitch side. Izzy Mayhew is with LJ. LJ, all yours. These might be the best seats in the house. They're certainly the happiest seats in the house at the moment. Quinn's back to where they want to be. How much fun has this been today? You know, it's, it's been really good, and it's nice to, you know, get the attack flowing. We've had a tough few weeks, but we've managed to stick together. And as you can see from the score today, we're getting our back through on the ball, we're scoring tries, and, yeah, just having fun. It's nice. I talked to Amy pre-match about how that break last weekend might have acted as a bit of a reset for this squad. Is that what it feels like now? Definitely, like, we've had, you know, we've played everyone once now, so we're kind of, like, in that middle block of the season and going into the other half, and... It has been nice just to reset and come back in and you know we've stuck together throughout like losing's not fun but we've stayed together and we're putting a performance in today that we we can be really proud of which is good ellie kildun doing ellie kildun things obviously she's got a hat trick today but a little cheeky meat pie for yourself first one of the second half happy with that yeah i don't really know how it happened to be just saw the line and dotted it down but yeah score's nice so yeah it's just just good to like get the phases going and then i can have a little cheeky try in the corner so that's good and how much will there be celebrations after this game tonight? And obviously, next Saturday, live on TNT, it is the duel, the big one against Saris. So how's the preparation going to look for that six-day turnaround against league leaders? I think we've just got to, you know, build off this week's performance and we've put phases together and we've scored tries and we're just going to go into Saris next week, just the same, and we've just got to keep building each week. And the celebration's going to be good tonight. And obviously, Scott is 100, so we've got to celebrate her um, and the win. So, Thanks for your time, Izzy. Thank you very much. They're going to have plenty to celebrate, aren't they? Thank you, LJ. Quinn's back in the Sail Sharks, 22. Popped up for Tirani. Oh, she just lost the ball in there momentarily, but it was a backward rip from Sail. You may have heard the referee say, so still there. Quinn's a little honey-potted round the ball momentarily, and it's Emily Robinson who has come off the bench and makes the carry. First time back after her suspension. Now, Emily Scott has spotted some room out on the right. Tysha Harper nearly managing to get over that. Popped up for Latcher. Flo Robinson onto the field as well. Tirani, oh, perhaps it should have gone to Bonnet. Scott, Powell just steps inside Kay Searcy, who's Another one of those getting some minutes, second half for keep Sale moving, Sharks. <laughs> Penalty count is beginning to mount for five. the visitors. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the seventh that Sale have given away. But for me, the most damaging of that is a lot has been in and around this 22. You see the intent, Langi Twima looking to hit it into the corner. Just interesting for me. Harlequin's empty in this this far side, so they they've got so much space. If they want to swing the attack and go back down there. They tried to do it then through Emily Scott, but because they had no backs to go to on the far side, everyone was running laterally around. Just hold people there. Defences either have to stay. If they don't stay, you just take the easy space. Ball down from Lochner. Connie Powell at the back. She scored a ton of these for Gloucester Hartbury, but she's not got too many in a Harlequin shirt. Now there's a penalty advantage. So shots have come through illegally to try and make the sack. There for Wilcock. Looks to try and drive low. Beth Wilcock for the line. <laughs> Harry Wallbound says try. It's the hat trick for Wilcock. She scored the sort of try that the forwards will do day in, day out. But with the motivation of the hat trick, she gets her third meet part of the afternoon. I love it when you see backs doing four things, and I love it even more when you see wingers doing four things. Why she's in the ball in the first place, I'd love to know, but just look at this. Gets the ball, takes it off the prop and says, give it here, going straight through the middle. Brilliant finish. Not one for her highlights reel, no doubt, but a brilliant finish nonetheless. Two hat tricks among the Harlequins alumni this afternoon. Kildun and Wilcock. That is a bit more like it for Ella Cromack as well. Conversion takes Harlequins up to 46. These are not score lines that the home side have been managing over the course of this season. Goodness, will it be feeling good now? It's the, it's the lift that they've needed, isn't it? They've needed a result like this. They've needed something to hang their hat on. They've been brilliant both sides of the ball. Their mall's been fantastic. Their mall drive, which it, you have to have a solid mall drive in this game, in this league. You have to have something you can pin your hat up to, hat on, and that you can go to. They look like a different team out here today. Out the back from Tuima, Scott. She's had a calm and assured game on her 100th as well, Emily Scott. A typical Emily Scott performance. That was just knocked on by Abby Fleming. And uh, Connie Powell was in front and played the ball. So the fact that any advantage was denied means it's actually a penalty to sell Sharks. And Beatrice Regoni take them into the 22. This is a huge moment in the context of sales Brings shark season. Bonus point tries. They can't get much out of this game. I doubt they're going to get a losing bonus point. So to get four tries would be huge. To come away here now with a try and have 12 minutes to go back at Harlequins and aim for something and get something out of this game. Will be huge. See as he brings it down. Can they use that experience in the pack to try and Number find a way round Harlequins? And they've certainly got the point of attack in the right area. Now the strip. Tackle move! Plenty of bodies there. Got to try and play it away. Three metres out now, trying to keep this as tight as they can. Everyone Benson away. goes. Harper's waiting for it. Jarrell outside. outside it. It's gone behind them all. Yamamoto. Oh, and Rigoni not held and now looking for the line. Just repelled. Still advantage. Howard. Look to try and chip it through. Oh, it's all going to be too much. No advantage, back for penalty. It's just so harsh, isn't it? It sums up their season. 
think Antwis has come out of this mall way too early for me. They're going forward. Sarah Bonner does really well to get around the outside here, try and come through the middle. But the patience that Sale have shown in this. It's actually half a go around the, cor around the corner. I just don't think you need to come out of this. Keep it in, keep bodies on. Just get yourself they isolated and then you're under pressure. Let's we'll see if they can get anything from this quick tap. Just Taylor Roberts. Oh dear. Ball knocked on by no, Erica no, no, Jarrell. And in this sort of Good. red zone. Ball's available, it's your own player. Just has to be better than that. Perfect. No! Yeah, it's just crushing again, isn't it? You opt to do that. You know exactly where the ball's going. If you're opting opt to quick tap, you know who you're hitting, you know who's meant to be on the ball and who's three, clearing that breakdown. One, two and four. So one, to lose two that four. first phase when there's not a load of pressure. The pressure's coming from yourself because of how flat you're putting yourself on that ball, if that makes sense. Worst thing for Erica Jarrell, she's not going to get a chance to put things right. Numbers came up. Katie Benson, Neve Swales and Jarrell will make way. And Amber Schoenick and Young, Polly Bowman coming onto the field as well. Quins, let's go. Now, if you're uh, interested in watching a bit of football later on, well, you've got a choice, frankly, because uh, we've got some Serie A action, which is going to be on TNT Sports 1 at 7.30 tonight. You've got Inter against Juventus. Or if you fancy a little bit of league up, well, Lyon are taking on Marseille, and that one is on TNT 2. Both matches live at 7.30. And... Harlequins will be pleased to be putting in a performance like this ahead next week of their visit to the Stonex. Our PWR live match, Saturday midday, TNT Sports 1, Saracens against Harlequins women. Stream live as well on Discovery+. Yes, please, Mark, sir. Thank you. Good. Yeah, just the line-out, not straight there. Really good pressure from Harlequins. But again, when you're going to the front to throw not straight, it's just brutal. Close. Close. It is a simple game when you do simple well. Friends. When you don't do simple well, it turns into a really hard game where you have to wrestle Five. momentum everywhere possible. Set. Break from the back from Fleming. On for Flo Robinson. Tackle now! He's in really flying form towards the end of last season for Exeter Chiefs, Flo Robinson. Hasn't quite hit those straps yet in a Harlequin shirt. I think you just saw earlier the difference that having Lucy Packer back, make, Packer back makes to this side. She just seemed really sure out there. She was bossing everybody around. Her execution on her box kicks was fantastic, taking away the pressure. I think she's gone really, really well today. Maybe it's because she's 24 now, she's getting old. <laughs> yeah, one of three Harlequins initially called into John Mitchell's Red Roses training squad. Interesting to note that there were nine in the women's Six Nations squad a year ago. It was only oh, just a training on. squad a couple of weeks ago in January, but perhaps that tells a bit of a story about the exodus of talent, those that are playing at the play top on. level or certainly being called okay, in to England. No! Like for, for was the then North. called in after those initial three, so it was four all in all, but still Line less in. than half that number. Two knock-ons, first from We're seeing a little bit of pinball and knocking on going on in the uh, middle ten metres of the field, so we'll have the scrum. Just a product, isn't it, of trying hard. They're trying to throw the ball around, they're trying to create, which you can't fault them for. Sometimes it just doesn't stick, sometimes it's not your day, That's and today it really point. has been Harlequin's day. Every bounce of the ball, right, right back to Ellie Kildun's third try, that hat-trick. To the ball, the bouncing down the touchline, managing to stay in for Wilcott. Crouch. Emily Scott on her Five. 100th appearance. Of course, no Bella McKenzie. She has made her way back Six. to Australia, now turning out for the Waratahs, but on this 100th club appearance, how much is Emily Scott enjoying her rugby? Quinn's up to go to the other side and 
That in-out run from Kildun, keeping the defender guessing as to which side she's going to attack. Flo Robinson gives it up. Nicola Wide nearly managing to step through the replacement. Third Premiership appearance for Wide this season. Scott. And for Lochner. South African in midfield. Scott comes round to the right. Long one over the top. Is it going to find hands? Yes, it is. Robinson on for Hannah Duffy who's on for a few minutes Scott Fleming wins again into the 22 Flo Robinson oh sorry Emily Robinson is the uh, dummy run now it's Wilcock three tries for Beth Wilcock in this match as has Kildun Lochner, he's got through a lot of carrying for Harlequins. Flo Robinson, then asking questions around the fringes. Abby Fleming, the Welsh international, then taking it on. Ball's just gone forwards. For all the tussle and toil of Harlequins. Won't be getting further than their eighth try just in this period of attack. Yeah, Fleming's gone really well, hasn't she? You can see how exhausted she is on screen now. She's got through so yeah, much work today. Yeah. Okay. Let's find out, please. She's almost got a new lease of life, hasn't she? Moving into that back row. Often seen in the second row as well. Crouching down at eight now, but... She's gone about her business very, very well this afternoon. French. Yeah, started every test last year for Wales. Bind! On one of those retainer contracts. Set. Working part-time as a physio. Sharks. Looking to try and play out the 22 with Howard no, making out. the carry. Out. Paris Redden. Tackle. Play on. And Antwis with the carry. Oh, and look at the work from Emily Robinson. Okay. It's what they've missed, isn't it? A fetcher getting the ball back. To Ema then. Put this into the corner. Super from Robinson, though. Yeah, just really good work. She just allows Agwis to fall at her feet in front of her, and then just look at the the grip over. Okay, Quinn, Quinn. So yeah, hard to move yeah. when you're latched on that strongly. No. Really good textbook turn over there Ball. for the fans, for the seven fans. Bonner brings it down. You've lost. Valid. They're looking into that corner. Certainly okay. Connie Powell was momentarily, but the advantage was broke away with number five in front. against Quinns because actually they Quinn's had the leaning in front, in front, of, the front of the ball. Construction. Beatrice Regoni with the penalty to clear the lines. That is one thing for me that Harlequins can look at after this game, is how they're breaking away from the ball and making sure that they have actually got people to go to, the timing of that. Amy Lazel, just with the run, having not seen the ball go out into touch, wide, and then it's there for Emily Robinson, she's kicked it into her sister, in fact. I thought that uh, with all those times in the family garden that they might have got a bit more accurate there, but... Uh, well, with the uh, scrum awarded to Sale Sharks, Natasha Hunt, Already kicked into who's your player. player of the match? I think the forwards have put in an absolute shift. They've given front foot ball and they've, they've gone forward all day. But some backs that I want to shout out to, Izzy Mayhew, I think she has been fantastic. Haven't seen her in that 13 shirt all that often this season. Lucy Packer has controlled the game so well. But for me, player of the match has to go to Ellie Kildun. 
I just think she's had an unbelievable game. Obviously, the anticipation of, of where the ball's going to be, covering the amount of ground that she's covered. The hat-trick score, the assist. Beth Wilcock as well on the hat-trick. You've got to mention her, but Ellie Kildun for me has been worlds apart from everyone else on this pitch today. Just in time for her to hear the announcement from Mike Bovel down below us and uh, get a little quick flash of smile on the face of Ellie Kildun. I think she should put beads in her hair more often because it obviously works for her. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Minori Yamamoto trying to help Sir Sharks get going. Rick, play on, Initially Rick a travelling reserve, but once uh, Lauren play Delaney on. was unable to get the start, then Yamamoto knew that she was onto the bench and fizzes it off to, to Taisha Harper, who steps inside Cromack into the last two minutes of the game. Wythe with the carry. Penalty, Quinns. Great turnover again by Lochner. I think she's had a fantastic game too. Interesting decision. Flo Robinson, quick tap and then kick. And look at the pace from Kildun. Almost knowing it. <laughs> Capping off her afternoon with a fourth try for Harlequins. Named player of the match, and there's the cherry on top. See the little cowboy shout out as well. It's just amazing. As a commentator, when you name a player of the match and then they go and score, that's the cherry on top of the cake for us as well. I just thought, why has Flo Robinson tapped this? It, it didn't make any sense to me. And then you just see Ellie Kildun fly out from nowhere. Again, that anticipation. You can see her check behind on this angle. Check behind, see if Ellie Kildun's there. Fantastic nudge and a really good chase. Sometimes the ball just bounces for you. And today, the ball has just bounced for that girl. It was a hell of a nudge, though, wasn't it? Flo Robinson weighted that absolutely perfectly. We've seen some exceptional assists this afternoon. Rigoni's for Hungertau's try. And then the conversion is good. Harlequins have got themselves above the 50-point mark. But the woman of the hour has to be Ellie Kildun, the player of the match and the scorer of four tries, no less, in this. Three for Beth Wilcock as well. And Sale Sharks, well, they've come on the road, Mohan, hoping to get a victory that they desperately need, sensing that Harlequins were there for the taking. With a full-time score of 53 points to 12, it's turned into the sort of performance that Harlequins desperately needed.